the fascination of the eerie. Weird, blood-chilling tales told by old Nancy, the witch of Salem, and Satan, her wise black cat. They are waiting, waiting for you now. Today. Yes, sir. A hundred and thirteen year old. <laughs> well, Satan, if you'll pass the word to douse all lights, we'll be getting down to business. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Make it nice and dark. Sitting amongst the gloomy shadows is the way to hear our pretty tales. I'll draw up to the fire and gaze into the embers. Gaze into them deep, and soon you'll see inside a little shop across the seas in Paris, France. A little curiosity shop it is, full of odd and old and funny things for sale. And there begins our story of the mannequin. <laughs> the mannequin! <laughs> Look, monsieur, the powder box of Marie Antoinette, about 2,000 francs. I haven't the slightest use for a lady's powder box. No? I show monsieur the pistol of Maximilien Robespierre. I'm not interested in pistols. Uh, I show monsieur the sword of the Marquis de Lafayette. Please, please, I don't want that either. You do not desire the sword of Lafayette? No, all monsieur desires is to get out of here. Wait, Paul. I owe Henri an explanation after looking at everything in this place. Monsieur, I regret that I must leave your excellent shop without making a purchase. But you see, I came here in search of a particular something which I have not found. Oh, what is it, Monsieur Seek, you have not found? I, I don't know. Comma? <laughs> All I know is that I became convinced that there was something in your shop that, well, crazy as it may sound, Something that wanted me to have it. I always knew a man had to be insane before he chose painting as a career. But that notion proves that you're even madder than the average artist. Something that wanted me to have it. Bah! Monsieur, do I understand you are an artist? Uh, why, yes. Uh, an artist who paint picture? <laughs> Guilty. Oh, monsieur, come quick, this way. What for? I have something you will buy. Something only for the artist. What on earth? It must be something precious if he keeps it behind all these locks. <laughs> Wait until you see. Uh, Andre, you want us to go down in that cellar? Oui, monsieur. Uh, follow me. I turn on the light. What the... Ah, come, monsieur. Please come, please come. All right, right. I see but... nothing down there but crates and broken junk. He's unlocking another door. Please come, monsieur. Too sweet. Come on, Paul. I'm with you. What the deuce did he want you to see? I think it's the thing I came here to find. I feel its call again. Whatever wants me to have it lies behind that door. Oh, bank. We'll soon find out. He's drawing the last bolt. I need God. That's a buffet, Chacun. He says he's afraid. Now the door's unlocked, he doesn't pull it open. What's wrong with you, Henri? You're trembling like a frightened child. What are you afraid of? I... What's behind that door? I... I open the door, monsieur. Regarde. Good Lord. There's a woman in that closet. She's hanging by the neck. Her hands and feet are bound with ropes. This man's a murderer. They killed her. No, 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 no. She is not a woman. She is a mannequin. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. What? It's only a mannequin ball. A lay figure. You mean <laughs> a dummy? Yes, yes. Every artist has one in his studio. You've seen mine. I drape costumes on it instead of using a live model. And the figure in your studio isn't anything like this one. I should say it isn't. This is a work of art. It's positively lifelike. To me, it still looks like a woman hanging there. Why have you got to trust up, Henri? As though it were some dangerous animal. Take that rope from around the neck and bring it under the light so that I can see it properly. Oh, oui, monsieur. Monty, he's frightened to death of the thing. I can see that. But why? 
It's merely a big doll made of wooden cloth and cotton stuffing. Bring it out, Henri. Oh, yes, yeah, monsieur. Two, three. That's right. Cut the rope from its neck. Hurry up, she isn't going to bite you. Oh, yes, yeah, monsieur. Well, aren't you going to cut those cords that bind the hands and feet? I want to see how the joints work. Mm, monsieur, you perhaps will cut the cords? Oh, give me the knife. Easy. I don't wonder they don't like to touch the thing, Monty. It seems living, human. It's the most remarkable mannequin I've ever seen. Mm, its covering is of the finest silk. Look how it's padded. Every muscle, every feature is perfection. The face is almost beautiful. It's lovely. A master artist did this job. He was a crackerjack mechanic, too. Listen, as I move these joints about, you don't hear the slightest squeak. How is the hair fastened on? It actually seems to be growing from the head. Say, the hair isn't an ordinary wig. Hmm, sounds like a wooden base underneath. Tiny holes must have been drilled in the head and the hairs inserted one by one. Who could have gone to all that trouble? Search me. The maker has given a glass eyes, too. Yes, I've already noted that. And they stare at us as though that dummy understood every word we're saying. Funny. Those eyes do convey an illusion of intelligence. Monsieur, do you find the, the mannequin good? Good? She's perfect. Then you will buy? You will take her away? Well, I'd like to, Henri. But I can't afford anything so fine. My price is very low, monsieur. Yes, I've already heard some examples of what you call low. How much? Ah, uh, monsieur, we wish to be rid of her. The price, it do not matter so long you take her from the shop. Monty, wait. There's something funny about this figure. They're too anxious to get rid of it. You're sure this isn't stolen goods, are we? Oh, no, 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 monsieur. We are honest people. We prove we buy this mannequin from place in Lyon. We buy a sheep. That is the reason we sell cheap to you. Well, I don't know what this mystery is. But if you can prove you bought her legally in Lyons, I'll take her. You... you buy her, monsieur? Pack her up, and I'll tell you where to send her. Oh, oui, oui. Now, here is the box in which she came, monsieur. It looks like a coffin. Monty, you won't have her delivered to your door in that. It'll frighten your wife to death. <laughs> it probably would give Florette a turn. But I'll warn her what to expect. No, better than that. We'll take it home with us on top of a cab. And now, monsieur, you will place my purchase in this box. I'll pay you and be on my way. Uh, would monsieur mind if I, if I do not touch the mannequin again? You, monsieur, will lift her in the box? You don't like her a little bit, do you? Now that I've removed the cords with which you had a bound, you probably think her hands will throttle you or something. Well, I'm not afraid of her. Come, pretty lady, prepare to turn... Monty! Monsieur! Monty, I just saw that figure's arms curl about your shoulders. It looked as though she were embracing you. Now that we're nearly home, Paul, please wipe that look of superstitious gloom from your face. Aren't you yet convinced that my new mannequin is just a mannequin? Naturally, your explanation of the thing's weird movements is the only reasonable one. Of course. Hanging in the damp cellar of that shop, its wooden frame became warped and out of adjustment. That would have made its limbs perform those eerie contortions. <laughs> I confess I was considerably startled, though, when its arms wrapped themselves so lovingly around my neck. I mustn't tell Florette I've purchased such an amorous lady. You know how jealous she is. Ah, oh, here we are. I'm glad. And that figure's coffin-like box above us on the roof of this cab, I felt as though I were riding with a corpse. <laughs> I'd better assure Florette that that's not what I'm bringing home before she sees the box and starts to wonder. Oh, darn, it's too late. There she is at the window. Now, Raymond's with her. Well, thank heaven he's here. I'll have a brother artist to help me gloat over my new purchase. He won't share your dislike of her. Mm. They've left the window. They must be coming to the door. Yes. Take down that box, Cabby. Oui, monsieur. I'll send Potter over to help him carry it inside. Monty! Hello, Florette. Hello, Raymond. I say, old chap, what have you got in that beastly-looking box? We saw you arriving in the wonder. Just wait until you see her. Wait till we see her? Yes, darling. I'm bringing home my new sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ask your new sweetheart. Don't be jealous yet. Is Potter around? Oh, we left him standing at the door. Potter, oh, Potter. Yes, Mrs. Montague. Come here and help the cabbie with his box. Good away, sir. What is inside that box, won't it? You'll soon find out. Oh, how do you fellows? Bring her in. I'll open the door for you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, here we are. Here we are. Uh, you can lay it down here in the hallway. That's right. Now get me a hammer, Potter. There's one in my studio. Or oh, will you pay the cabbie, Paul? Monty, tell us what you have in that box immediately, Yes, don't keep us in suspense, old chap. You'll see for yourselves in a moment. Potter, hurry up. Here's the hammer, sir. Here's the hammer. Shall I, uh, shall I give it the work, sir? No, I'll open it. There's only a single nail at each end holding the boards. Behold. <gasps> Good Lord. Mr. Montague. Take her away. She's a cop. No, 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 Florette. It's just a wax figure. You're both wrong. It's my new mannequin. New mannequin, Monty? Wait till I lift her out and show you. <gasps> oh, she put her arms on your neck. <laughs> you explain that, Paul, while I place her in this chair. The framework inside is warped, Florette, which makes the limbs spring into queer positions. At least that's what Monty says. The thing's an absolute work of art. I knew you'd appreciate her, Ray. But... Monty, these joints aren't warped in any way. Are they, they move in my hands without the slightest effort. Because walking is not the reason why her arms move just like light. She's more than just a mannequin. She's not good. I do not like her. You're jealous of my new sweetheart. But that's what she is. My newfound love. <laughs> She's certainly lovely, isn't she, Florette? <gasps> what was it? I heard it too. Heard what, Monty? That figure sighed. You're crazy. No, I heard her. So did I. Me too, sir. Then the four of you are batty. Monty, take this thing away. I will not have it here, I'm afraid. Dear, you're not going to become hysterical over a big stuffed doll. Here, let me hold you in my arms. <gasps> the figure made a hissing sound. It did. Oh, look at his eyes. They stab me with hate. Why, oh, they do. Have you all become raving lunatics? She or I must leave this house, Monty. I will not stay here with her. Nor I, sir. Oh, I give notice. Oh, this is becoming ridiculous. You know, Monty's right. We're making fools of ourselves. Because this figure is so lifelike, we're imagining things that can't possibly be so. You certainly are. Potter, stop trembling like a frightened puppy and mix everyone a scotch and soda. Yourself included apparently needed to steady such flighty nerves. Uh, yes, sir. Serve it in the studio. Go on in, fellas. Come on, Paul. All right. I come, too. Uh, wait, Florette. Before we leave here, I want you to take a good look at this mannequin and convince yourself it's no more than cloth and cotton stuffing. I do not wish to look. Her eyes stare at me with hate. How can eyes made of glass show any emotion? Monty, I'm afraid of her. No matter what you say, I know she is more than what she seems. And I know she do not like me. Florette, dear, you should be ashamed of the way you're acting. Come now, snap out of it. I... I am very silly, I suppose. That thing, it can be nothing more than just a great big doll. You know it can't. Yes, I know. And I'm afraid of her no longer. I prove to you she cannot fight me, Sherry. Regard it. I slap her face. No, don't. You might knock her off that chair and break her. Very well. But because I meant to slap her face, you see, I am not afraid of her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Your courage is proven. Now let's go in and join the others. Wait. Bess, kiss me, Mon Petit. You did not kiss me when you arrived. I was too excited over my purchase, I guess. Now I'll make up for lost time. Yes, kiss me. Kiss me much. Oh! Dear, what's the matter? Paul, Raymond, come here. What oh, is it? What's the matter? Look at Florette. She suddenly collapsed in my arms as though she'd been struck. Struck? Yes, Paul. You're a doctor. See what's wrong There's with her. Blood oozing from her head. She's not badly hurt. No, merely a flesh wound. Just enough to knock her out. What did it? I don't know. There's a hammer lying at her feet. Someone must have thrown it at her. But we were alone here. You were not alone. I tell you... Monty, we... that mannequin was here. And when you opened the case in which you brought her here... You left this hammer lying beside her hand. If 
behind what you call a natural explanation for everything, Raymond. Even say she did not throw that hammer at my head last month. Ray, will you try to talk some sense into this poor deluded child? My dear Florette, Monty is right in insisting that your accident was due to some normal cause. It's impossible to believe that an inanimate lay figure threw a hammer at you. That mannequin is not the thing it seemed, I tell you. She tried to cause my death because she loved my husband. My dear child, you can't believe such arrant nonsense as that. Oh, you are like Monty. You think me just a fool. Paul is the only one who do not say that I am crazy when I speak about that mannequin. But he is gone away from Paris now. Hmm. Thank heaven for that. I couldn't stand both him and you talking madness day and night. Oh, Raymond, I must make you believe what I say for Monty's sake. Since that figure come here, he has changed. I have not changed. You have. Ever since you know me, I have been your model. Now, no more, you let me pose for you. You paint only from that mannequin. Oh, for the love of Ray. You know I'm working on a canvas depicting Abelard and Helwa. Florette posed for Helwa's and the face is finished. Now I'm simply painting in the costume. And she's sore because I draped it on the mannequin. Instead of making her stand motionless for hours like a wooden clothes horse. All artists do that, you know, Florette. But he is not only painting in the costume. He have retouched the face for which I pose until now he look like the mannequin. Well, what if I have? Have you, Monty? I... Uh, yes. Why? I will tell you. The face of hell was should be all love. I love Monty, but I am just a simple woman. The figure is more than woman. And she loves him more than I do. Oh, that rot. But, well, crazy as it may sound to you, Ray, I did catch an expression of absolute devotion from that mannequin's painted face. Because she know you. You told me that she called you before you ever see her in that shop from which you buy her. Uh, Oh, I'm sick of this whole business. I know she's nothing but a jointed image. I'll never have a moment's peace while she remains inside the house. You win, Florette. You mean... To... I'll get rid of her. You've admired her, Ray. You'll take care of her. I've heard enough of your silly talk about a voice inside this box, Potter. Now that we've reached my chambers, pour yourself a drink and forget it. But, dear, uh, there was a voice, Mr. Raymond. Mr. Montague heard it, and so did his missus. Well, I didn't. All I heard was a crash as you let your end of this case fall to the floor. And if I find the figure inside broken, I'll strangle you for it. Uh, find me something with which to pry this lid open. You're not going to take the figure out, sir? Naturally, naturally. Now, this heavy hunting knife will do the trick, I think. There we are, Potter. Lift the lid aside. Yes, sir. Ah. And now I lift the fair, inanimate cause of so much unreasoning terror from her most uncomfortable-looking casket. Out you come, pretty one. I'm not afraid of you. You're going to live with me now. Florette says you're in love with Monty, but he's given you to me. You won't see him anymore. Look! The figure's hand! Huh? It's grabbed the dunce knife! Uh, her other hand's at my throat, Potter! Father, get that knife. Oh, oh. She stabbed him, killed him, and now she's coming after me. Help, help, help. Help. Florette, will you please stop pacing the floor like a caged animal? Raymond has the figure safely inside his studio by this time, and it's not coming back here. <gasps> what was that? Mary, the doorbell did. It is she come back. Rot, it's probably Potter returning from Raymond's place. I'll let him in. Hello, Monty. Paul. Hello, Florette. Oh, Paul, I am glad to see you. You alone do not say I am a fool about that mannequin. You see, the lay figure is still the paramount topic of conversation, Paul. Just as when you went away from Paris. I'm not surprised. And I'm here to carry on the conversation, Monty. But I've just returned from Lyons, where your big doll came from. What do you mean? I went there purposely to learn what I could about the figure, and I discovered some interesting things. Look at this photograph, but first let me colour half of it with my hand. Here. Why, it's a picture of the mannequin. No, Monty. It's a portrait of a living woman. Now look at the other half. A man stand beside her. Here's Monty. It's 
That's my photograph. I never posed for such a picture. Those clothes we're wearing, I never saw them before. The costumes you see are those of a hundred years ago. The originals of this picture have been dead almost that long. I do not understand. Where did you get this picture? I had it photographed from a painting in the Lions Museum, which bore the date of 1840. 1840? Why do the dead man in this picture look so much like Monty? I can't explain their resemblance except by supposing it's one of nature's duplications. The man you see here was a sculptor named Marcel Valmont. The woman was his wife. They were greatly in love with one another, so much so that when she died, he lost his reason. He is reputed to have made a life-size figure that resembled her, which he kept always at his side until his death. You think my mannequin... Yes. That is why she loved my Monty then. Because he looked like her husband. But the mannequin is only a copy of the woman. From what we have seen, I think she's something more than that. Something more? Yes. I wish to examine your mannequin carefully. It is gone. Gone? Where? I gave it to Raymond about an hour ago. Oh, that's all right. He'll keep it safe. Oh, that bell! I'll answer it. She said she would return. Stop that, Tourette. Miss Montague! Miss Montague! What? Oh, he is only he. Why are you wearing handcuffs? Eh? And who are these men with you? Pardonnez-moi, monsieur. I'm Sergeant Grosjean of the Surete. Police? What are you doing with my servant? He is under arrest because there have been attempts at murder. But I didn't do it. She stabbed him with a knife. I saw her do it. Who stabbed who? The figure stabbed Mr. Raymond, and then she got away. The figure. You're lying. That's impossible. His story is insane, monsieur. That is why we bring him here for question in your presence. The wounded man cannot yet talk. His story is not insane. She tried to kill Raymond because he'd take her away from you, Monty. Florette. And she will come back here just like she said. She's only cloth and wood, I tell you. She can't be anything else. Quiet. Listen. I hear footsteps. Of a woman. In my studio. Come, we're going in there. We oui. Open quick that door. I have it. <gasps> a mannequin. Oh, she has entered through the window. A bloodstained knife is in her hand. It is the one she used on Mr. Raymond. She's coming for me. Oh, Monte, save me. I won't let her harm you. Stop that thing, quick, quick. I've got a knife. Now, I've knocked her down. She's just a padded figure. She couldn't walk as we've seen her. She couldn't try to kill anyone. We're all of us mad and seeing things that can't be true. No, we won't see things anymore. Paul, don't slash her with that knife. I'm going to find the infernal mechanics that make her run. Oh, oh, you ripped her body. You spoiled the thing of beauty. Are you satisfied now? Now when you see she's nothing but cloth and wadded stuffing on a wooden frame? The framework isn't wooden. It's a human skeleton. Oh, my oh. 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 oh, the head is a skull. The air is growing from a human skull. Oh, it's... It's the skeleton of Marcel Valmont's wife. He put her bones inside the figure that he made. It seems so. He put bones denied rest in the grave. I've been lonely, Monty. She found and loved you. Because you look like the man she loved in life. I think that's the explanation of all that's happened, Monty. Perhaps it is. Where, where is her husband's grave, Paul? At Lyons, in the Cemetery de Loyes. As soon as you police have finished, Sergeant Grosjean, uh, I'll see these poor, restless bones are buried beside the man she truly loved. Monty. Florette, I, I wonder if I... if I was him a hundred years ago. We'll have another 30 yarns to spin you folks when we comes back from our vacation. <laughs> <laughs>